After colour hunting class, it was time for Nambana session, the daily routine of monks and novices. After that, the novices put the utensils back in their place to clear the space for walking meditation. Pratajan told the novices to be mindful and pray in their mind as they practice the walking meditation. Okay, so when, when you have free time, you can walk and then meditate. Okay, so you can do the puto or you can do you know, like me, I, B, well, may I be wise, may I be free, like that. The novices continue to do the walking meditation. Pratajan rang the bell as a signal for the novices to switch to the standing meditation. Okay, slowly, right, left. You keep the eyes about two or three meters ahead of you. Uh, don't walk, uh, don't look here and there. Yesterday evening, a storm hit all areas of Dead Udon district. As the rain turned into light drizzle, the novices gathered at the study hall. The lesson began with the Dhamma story. Pratajan continued the story of the Buddha's enlightenment and what happened after that. Pankavagya, or the first five disciples, had followed and assisted the Buddha since he was newly ordained. The Buddha start himself. He want to try to whether that would be the path to an enlightenment. Yeah. So during that time, all these five people are upatha, you know, helping. Okay. So, but the Buddha. After he tried to stop himself eating a little bit, you know, remember that, that day that we showed a picture of the Buddha almost thin, very like a skeleton, and he tried to, to eat again because he found out that that is not the path because he almost died. After he became enlightened, the Buddha visited the Pankavigya at Isipatana forest. The Pankavigya planned not to stand up to welcome the Buddha. They intended not to pay homage to him and would refuse the saffron robes. However, the Buddha's glowing halo made them forget what they planned. The Buddha's first teaching was Dhammaka Kapavatana Sutta on the full moon of the eighth lunar month, or what's presently known as Asauha Puja Day. So the Buddha, now the Buddha gave the first teaching. Do you know what, what the teaching is? Is it the four wheels? Yeah, it's turning, turning the wheel. Is the four wheels of success the first one is to choose the right one? It's called Tham, Thamma Jakkapa Vatana Sutta. Jak, you know Jakka? Wheel. Wheel, yes, wheel. And then Vatana, Kappa Vatana means turning. Okay, turning the wheel. What is the wheel? The wheel of Dharma. Oh, sutta, Sutta means the teaching. The, the collection of the, of the teaching of the Buddha. There were two main points of his first teaching. First was the things that monks shouldn't do. They must not relish in the extreme hedonism or of any pleasures from sensual indulgence. Extreme asceticism or self-mortification is also forbidden. The second teaching was about the Four Noble Truths, which consist of the truth of suffering, the truth of the origin of suffering, the truth of the cessation of suffering and the truth of the path to the cessation of suffering. Okay, go back to the four number two. The suffering, you, you need to understand it, okay? Cause of suffering, what you need to do for cause of suffering? Cause of suffering is craving, right? So we have to, we have to abandon, you know, we have to abandon craving, okay? And the end of suffering, what we have to do? We have to realize, right? Then what is the path toward the end of suffering, what we have to do? We have to cultivate, right? 
So what we do here, we, we try to cultivate the path towards suffering. After that, Pratajan explained to the novices about the Noble Eightfold Path, the path to the cessation of suffering and the liberation from the cycle of rebirth. You know what is the Noble Eightfold Path? Here is that with right view and then right, right thinking. Right? right thinking and then right speech. Okay, and then right, right action. And then right livelihood and then right effort and then right mindfulness right and then the last one is right concentration okay so this is very important the noble eightfold path the buddha preached to the five disciples kunadinya got ordained and became the first buddhist monk after that the buddha continued to preach to the other four members of the pankavagaya until they achieved enlightenment and became ordained. See, the first one I understand is he, his name is called uh, Gon Danya. Okay. But the Buddha very happy. The Buddha said, Buddha said Anya Gon Danya means uh, Gon Danya no. Gon Danya no. Okay? Because, you know, this is the first time when the Buddha uh, he understands himself and he also can explain to some people who can also understand. After listening to the teaching of Atana Lakana Sutta, meaning no self or soullessness, the Pankavigaya managed to get rid of their worldly desires and become Arahan, or ones who have attained Nirvana. Finally, the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha were established as the triple gem of Buddhism which was perceived as the most valuable thing in Buddhism. Pratajan asked the novices who could memorize the 10 precepts to pair up with the ones who couldn't and help them practice for tomorrow's assessment. After that, Pratajan allowed Andrew to talk to the novices and started a lesson that was related to the week of love. I would like you to draw something you love in there. Now listen carefully. It can be a person, it can be a place, it can be a thing, it can be an animal. Up to you, but you're gonna have to tell me why you put it in and why you love that thing, okay? After the novices were done, Andrew let them present their work. Okay, novice JL, come and stand here next to novice Pratik and tell us what you've got. So I've got uh, my family, my parents, and I tried to draw my dog, but he was white, so um, I, I couldn't really do it. And um, I drew a tree because I really love nature, plants and animals. Yeah. Why, why do you love nature? Why? It's very uh, simple and uh, you don't have to do anything to make it how it is. Is that a reason to love nature though? Because it's very beautiful. Do you want me to hold it for you? Yeah, it's only one word, family. Tell me why. Because I love my family the most and if I don't have my family, I will die because um, they buy me food. They um, uh, help me since I was a little baby. And if my mom was, if my dad and my mom didn't marry each other, it wouldn't be me and my brother alive. So you were born from love, right? Yes. So love is very important. Love is kind of like life, right? Well done. It's beautiful. What is it? First of all, I like my family, and I like my friends, and I also like drawing arrows because they're fun to draw and I practice. He also asked the novices about their organic watercolour artworks that they made in the afternoon. I express love through like this circle. It's the shape of it, it's unlimited so uh -huh. you can continue. 
like how love is unlimited, it, it never stops. Right. Uh, and this, the blue in the middle is kind of like be, be, being sad or lonely. And this used to be red. Red is like the warmth. Uh huh. The, and the warmth and the light love gives us. And the green is nature, how nature can help us, support us, and love us. Their artworks express love in different ways, but their love for their families was commonly expressed in all of their pictures. On the first day of the third week, the novices will learn to value what they receive from other people and return the kindness with love. More intense lessons are waiting for the novices as they're entering the week of love and mercy. Although the rain poured down for the whole night, it didn't stop Pratajan and the novices from doing the morning chant at 5am as usual. The morning chant not only praises the Dhamma, but also reminds the novices of the essence of being ordained. The daily routines of monks and novices are followed as instructed in the Vinaya with the purpose of eliminating desires, along with sacrificing for others and getting rid of laziness. These are the causes of sufferings as stated in the sermon. Those who are lazy will face sufferings and sins. This was the ninth day of the ordination. The novices still followed Pratajan to go for alms in the nearby area as usual. Buddhists of all ages waited to offer food to the monks to show their faith in Buddhism. This morning, Andrew Biggs, an instructor, also joined the alms offering. The Buddha praised the alms round as a precious task that helped spread Buddhism. Every morning, the novices assist Pratajan by holding alms bowls, as well as washing and wiping Pratajan's feet to express their gratitude to Pratajan.
Before breakfast, Pratajan taught the novices to memorize the Metta chant, a chant that spreads love and kindness to all beings. The Metta chant has been recited since ancient times by all monks. The chant helps foster kindness in those who recite it as they wish happiness for all beings. After that, Pratajan helped the novices practice the Metta chant and allowed the novices to practice by themselves if they wished. Call the rainbow and you come back, you have to send one by one. No. Right? Okay, who, who got it? You can go and memory and then come back and then you can take the exam. Okay? Alright? Most of the novices chose to practice with Pratajan. The novices who chose to practice by themselves tried very hard to memorize the verses. Shortly, some novices managed to memorize the verses and tried to chant them to Pratajan. In freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may I maintain well-being in myself. May, all, may everyone abide in well-being, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety. Pratajan kindly helped the novices who had still had problems memorizing the chant. Each novice had their own techniques to memorize the verses. Some preferred to read out loud in Bali, while some preferred to do it in English. What's the meaning of Bali for you? Um, the, the Bali is easier because it's more shorter and, and the words are quite the same, like Sape, Sata, and then it, and Honto. You just have to add Suki. But and then the first one, Sukito, you just have to add an A at the end. Yeah. By the time of the meal, many novices managed to recite the verses precisely. Before receiving their food, Pratajan corrected the novices' postures for meditation and used many materials to test their stillness. The novices tried to sit in an upright position and balance the object on their heads. Those who could do the meditation calmly would be allowed to get their food. Pratajan taught the novices the proper manner to scoop the rice. I trust, I believe in you. I believe in what we've practiced together so you can go in line. But please be careful when you touch a big spoon. Feel the sensation, the movement. We buy food to this. Try not to hit Hip. between big spoon, your bow, and those like any equipment. 
Once everyone received their food, Pratajan and the novices started chanting. The Buddhist proverb, love makes the world go round, means that love is very essential in this world and that life is more enjoyable when people love one another. What the little novices have learned will teach them to be kind and merciful. Once they grow up, they will become kind men and live peacefully with other people. After the meal, Pratajan and the novices washed the alms bowls. Then Pratajan and the novices swept the floor in the food hall and nearby area. Look, just look, let's do this. Okay, no need to. How far? Just sweep. Not hard, not hard. Some novices were not mindful and played around whilst they were doing their tasks. So Pratajan told them to be calm and reflect on their actions. Pratajan had the novices do the walking meditation to be more conscious of their actions with each step that they took. How many times do I walk? I don't know. Depends on you. It is the teacher's main duty to constantly remind their students to improve on themselves. Every time when we finish difficult things and we, we pass it safety and we do it by your own. So it's, it means that we have improvement, right? We can go on to, mm. to the next level. Yeah. Mm. We can practice more difficult things. Pratajan began this morning's lesson by talking about the ten precepts. The sila is the thing that we shouldn't do, right? So what should we do? We shouldn't. Huh? Yeah, we shouldn't do the, the thing that in, in the sila. Like for the novice, the thing that we shouldn't do ten things, right? Remember, what is the sila? No killing. No stealing. No stealing. No. No sexual activity. No lying. No lying. No drugs. No drugs. No eating afternoon. No eating in afternoon. Uh, no entertainment. No entertainment. No beautification. No, no sleeping on big bed. No sleeping on the big bed. And no receiving money. All novices already knew the ten precepts before their ordination, but after being ordained, they got to experience how to follow and practice each of the precepts. Who receiving money this morning? Ati. Ati. Okay, what, what happened? 
there was one wo woman. Uh -huh. She gave me one snack, and then when I almost walk, I I walk past one person already, and then I didn't saw her. She okay. put twenty five and thirty baht in my. So what will you do if people come and then offering you money? What oh, will you do? Kill them. Huh? Them. Okay. Jai Dev. Huh? Say thank you. Huh? Say I don't want to. Okay. Uh, bin Bin. Uh, I don't want this. Then 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 you rip the money. Okay. So you just you just say no. Okay? okay. Okay. What you do is you can say no. But if they put it in your money, you can just stand still and then have somebody take it out from your bowl. Okay. Then you, you are not receiving the money. Okay. If you if you receiving and then you walk on, then it's considered receiving. So that's that breaking the prison. Understand? Yes, sir. Apart from the ten precepts, Praajan also taught the novices about Kantawat, or a collection of duties. Okay, Watta is, is a Pali. It, it just means the thing that we do every day is called Watta, like going on every day. Okay, it's also in Thai, it's become like this. This verse Watta, it becomes Wat, you know? You know what Wat is? Yeah, so the word Wat is coming from Watta. So any place where there's no Watta, there's no Wat. The 14 principles of Kantawat feature monistic duties aimed to promote the harmonious living among the monks in monistic community. Many of the principles talked about duties of monks. They should take good care of their dwellings, go for alms, and treat each other with respect in a proper manner. The first duty is Akantukawat, or the duty of visitors. Since the novices are going on a field trip to Wat Nong Pa Pong and Wat Pa Nana Chad next week, they'll have to learn about this duty very soon. Akantukawat covers the topics of proper garment and actions of the novices and how they should follow the rules of the places they visit. Well, we have to show a size of respect, right? What is a size of respect when we go to another temple? We need to don't talk. Huh? Yes, good. Don't talk. Okay. What else? We don't play around. We don't play around. That's good. We yeah, don't keep. Make a mess. We not leave a mess. Yeah. We not trashing thing around. We treat it with respect. Do we need to write all of it? No, you can if you like. So the thing is, you talk, so the size of respect when you take the, your sandal, you take your shoe off. Okay, that's a sign of respect. When you go to the new temple or another temple, if you have the umbrella with you, you take it down. Okay, the, the umbrella is uh, it's not proper. When you go in, you, you fall with oh, properly. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then normally when we travel, we cover both shoulder, right? When you go for arms, we go for pintapada, we have both cover. But when we go to the another monastery, we will wear like this, we open our right we get shoulder. Huh? We bring our back. Okay, we so that's what we do. That's a side of, of respect when you go to, a, to another temple. The seventh duty is Aranyikwat, or the duty of monks who live in the wilderness. Aranyikawata, anybody know what Aranya means? Aranya, Aranya. Means forest. Okay, so in the forest, you have to know that. Aranyikwat warns the forest-dwelling monks to be careful not to harm nature and to take care of themselves whilst trekking in the jungle. So what should we do with that in, when we go to the forest? We should be quiet oh. and calm. Yeah. Yes? Another duty that the novices have been practicing is the Upachayawat, or the duty towards the mentors. So you, it's a relationship toward Upachaya is like a father and son, okay? So you uh, basically have to learn how to take care of your father, father in the spiritual life, yeah? your father as your novice. Upachayawat and Ajariyawat essentially talk about the same thing, which is the student's duty towards their teachers. And then also when Upachaya speaks, don't 
don't uh, interrupt in the middle. Uh, don't say things. Don't speaking. You, know, you have to listen to him carefully. If monks intentionally disobey these 14 principles, it will be considered as abad, which means an offence or a sin, from violating the vinaya that the Buddha prohibited. After the novices had learned about the 14 principles, Prajan divided the novices into groups to practice assisting Prajan. Once they get better, they can help assisting Luang Ta Ane in the future. The novices practice washing Prajan's hands, the task which they had to do before and after the meal. Please, can I take your yam, Nongta? You can. You, you can look at Upatak monks and like this. You can turn, you can carry, follow. Before, before you receive, you can ask, can I take your yam long time? The 14 principles that the novices learn today are the rules to maintain peace in society. This is another step for the novices to learn about Dhamma and Sila in order to become admirable and respectable novices. The learning process in the Week of Love started with the activity Tree Resolution. Wichai Suriyut, or Police Senior Sergeant Major Wichai, is the instructor. For the last 30 years, Sergeant Wichai was the man planting more than 3 million trees at Prangu, Sisaget Province, one of the droughtest lands in Thailand. Today, Hunter and Jack were observers as usual. Sergeant Wishai told about the obstacles of planting on the drought land since the beginning until he finally succeeded. Around the area of where Padab Wichai is from, it's, it's almost like a, a land where there is no life, there's no nature, there's no trees there, it's very dry. Um, now he's seen an opportunity to sort of instill life into this place. The area around there used to be used as a, as a sort of dumping ground. It didn't have any trees or anything. So for the purpose of restoring nature was one of the reasons why he had this commitment to plant trees in this area, to give life and to bring nature back into place. He also shared his inspiration of plants development, reforestation and added the importance of trees. Another purpose was because around his home and his community there was a lack of work and Padab Wichai noticed that people were, were living sort of in difficulty. There wasn't much work around and they were suffering as a consequence. So he thought if he could plant a lot of trees and this would also plant an opportunity because people would be able to live from what the trees produce.
Then, the novices observed what Sergeant Wishai prepared for them today. This was to let them value the trees practically. Asian Palmera Palm, a kind of tree with many benefits that Sergeant Wishai promoted to the community, not only for more trees, but it also made profits for villagers in Ban Pranggu. Then, Jack let the novices explain their stories about trees in their own ways. After that, the novices presented their stories to Sergeant Wichai and their friends. I made like a mind map of wow. the tree, uh, and in each little box of leaves, uh, it will show what you can do with trees. Like you can create life, you can make stuff, you can build stuff, you can eat, you can make medicine. It represents nature. Yep. So this is a road? Yeah. So this is your idea of nature? This is how you want nature to be? Yes. Trees all around, yeah? Even where we have roads, we For have... For the oxygen. Perfect. This is Donyang Na, so it can make rubber, which can make tri tri wow. tri Wow, so you're money. talking about and the rubber tree. And this thing can make toy. And, and when cut down, it can make loggings, which can make a uh, house and house height items inside, and you can make the boat. This is boats brilliant. Or, and this, and all trees create oxygen, and the palm, the other t tree can create fruits, which can feed, which can give you money or feed you up. The novices explain the benefits of trees, varied by their attitudes. This is just my imagination, so imagine someone pushed someone down off an edge and they grabbed a tree, then it was actually like uh, something that you grab in a secret passage opens. That's what it's like. Wow. But it actually gives oxygen. If, it, if we had no trees, no oxygen would occur. I drew a lot of uses for trees and what we can use them for. So this is a rubber tree. They can make tires out of cars and rubber trees can be used to make houses and sell for money. Also they can make uh, to be have up to to make the earth have more oxygen. It first starts off as a tree with fruits. It can make a book, a pencil, a ruler, a wood ruler, paper, a table, a hat, a broom, and fruits. Mm -hmm. And then repeats the cycle over and over and over. If trees never existed, mankind would never be this developed. And if we never saved trees, nothing would exist. We should care, be kind, respect Earth, and never harm Earth. And love Earth like we love our parents. After the activity ended, the novices thanked and blessed Sergeant Wichai. 
Then they went out to plant trees with Long Da Ane. For these past two weeks of ordination, the novices not only learned Buddhism and the Dhamma, but also learned about nature from many activities that help in planting them to love. These are the fundamentals of understanding others and living peacefully in the society. We would like to invite all Buddhists to an alms offering of dried food for True Little Monk, a wisdom training program for novices, at 6 a.m. at Wat Ba Sai Ngam, Dead Udom, Ubon Ratchatani. Please follow the summary of daily routine tomorrow at 9 p.m. Follow us worldwide streaming on www.truelittlemonk.com. The dual language broadcast is available on True Vision Channel 60 and 99 and True Vision HD Channel 119 and 333 and True Blukbanya Channel. The dual language broadcast is accessible 24 hours a day on True ID and True Blukbanya application. All episodes of the Daily Reel documentary of True Little Monk are available on YouTube. <laughs>